Hello, this is Jared Niemi with a mini lecture on the sign and signed rank tests for paired data. Uh, previously, we talked about this Rusty Leaves data set, and at that point, we talked about the uh, paired t test, where essentially we just run a one sample t test on the difference in the trees, or within a tree, on the number of rusty leaves from one year to the next. Uh, now the, we're going to be looking at uh, a non-parametric version, so where we don't assume normality of anything. And the first test we're going to be looking at is the sign test. And the sign test just looks at how many of these differences are greater than zero. So in this case, we have a one everywhere where it's greater than zero, and a zero if it's less than zero, if the difference between the number of rusty leaves in the two years is less than zero. And the sign test basically says, okay, if the null hypothesis is true, then that final column should just have a 50-50 chance of being 0 or 1. Um, and in this example, we ended up having 6 1s out of a total possible 8 that we could have had. And so the sign test just says, okay, let's calculate the probability of observing this many 1s or more extreme if the null hypothesis is true. And recall that in this example, we've been using a one-sided hypothesis. So the more extreme values are having six, seven, or eight ones. All right, so we can use the binomial probability to calculate the, these quantities. This turns out to be this right here. Uh, basically, we do the same calculation here for having six um, differences that were greater than zero, seven, and then eight, and adding them all together. And we get a p-value here that's 0.14. All right, so this sign test is conceptually very simple. It's just looking at coin flips, and under the null, you'd expect those to have a probability of 50-50, and under the alternative, it should be something different. Um, this test is conceptually pretty simple, but it's not very powerful, and therefore, it's rarely used. All right, so instead, we're going to be turning to something called the signed rank test, which is also referred to as the Wilcoxon signed rank test. And it's a bit more involved, but it has much better power. That is, uh, it's able to reject null hypotheses that are false more often than the sign test. All right, so here's what we do. We compute the differences in each pair, just like we've done before. Uh, any zeros that are in that list, we just drop those observations. Now we take the absolute value of those differences, and we rank them from smallest to largest, and then assign their ranks. And again, I'm going to be showing a simple example where I actually demonstrate how to do this. All right, once we have that done, then we go ahead and calculate this test statistic S, which is the sum of the ranks from the pairs, that is for the observations, that have the difference being positive. And now we're going to, just like we did before in the rank sum test, we're going to calculate what's the expected value of this and what's the derivation of this quantity. So the expected value happens to be this number right here, n times n plus 1 over 4, where n is the number of observations or the number of pairs of trees that we have, pairs of observations that we have. So I should say n is the number of trees that we have in this data set. The standard deviation of s is a bit more complicated, but it's just a function of n, the sample size. All right, now we're going to do exactly what we did before in the rank sum test where we uh, subtract from s, we subtract its mean, divide by its standard deviation, but we also have to include this same continuity correction factor. All right, and then finally we're going to calculate our p-value, and again from a standard normal table. Okay, so let's just demonstrate on this eight uh, tree data set. So before we had the differences, and we had, uh, for the sign test, we had this column, which is uh, how many of them are greater than zero, the differences. Uh, for, next, we calculate the absolute value of the differences, and then we sort them. All right, so 5 was the smallest absolute difference, 6, 6, 8, and so forth. And now we again assign their ranks, where for any ties, we do exactly what we did before on the rank sum test. We uh, use the average of the ranks for those values that are tied. All right, so here we had a rank of 2 and 3, so we average those to get 2.5. All right, so now we calculate our test statistic. Our test statistic here is the sum of the values that are um, that have a difference that's greater than zero. 
Right, so anywhere where this column is a 1, we add the ranks for that row. It turns out that our test statistic here is 32.5. We calculate the expected value of that test statistic. It's 18. The standard deviation of the test statistic is 7.14. And now we use the uh, standardization where we subtract the mean, divide by the standard deviation, including the continuity correction. Again, in this case, it was 0.5. And we get a Z statistic that's 1.96. We calculate the p-value, which is the probability in this case, since it's a one-sided hypothesis, just the probability that a standard normal is greater than 1.96, and that's about 0.02. Alright, so that is the signed rank test. We can, we can have uh, SAS do the calculation for us. Here again, we just input the data set, and now we run this proc univariate procedure. And we get a bunch of output, and the two lines that we're looking for here are the lines sign for the sign test that we talked about first, and the signed rank test that we talked about second. Um, in this case, the, um, the p-values here are for a two-sided hypothesis. Uh, there was no quick way, uh, or at least the statement sides equal u like we have used before uh, wasn't available. And if anybody wants to tell me in the comments what the appropriate response is to get the one-sided alternative, that'd be great. Uh, but we can still use these p-values, which are for the two-sided hypothesis, uh, in order to calculate the p-values for the one-sided hypothesis, and basically we just divide by two. So you take these uh, p-values, divide them by two, and you have the p-values for the one-sided hypothesis that we're interested in. All right, if you want to make a statistical conclusion, you would say something like this that removal of red cedar trees within 100 yards is associated with a significant reduction in rusty apple leaves by the Wilcock signed rank test with a p-value of 0.02. Thanks.